Hey guys, it's Gemini. Welcome back to another video. This is actually going to be a pretty long video. This is a discussion that I had on my stream the other day with Lorimbo, one of the best Infernal players in Stormgate. And he was in my stream chat. We were talking about some stuff and we decided to just bring him onto the call. So that way we can talk a little bit more in depth and um, actually get into the, some interesting details about what he thinks about Stormgate. And we were talking a little bit about, in general, some of the balance issues, some of the overall directions that the game was being taken in and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's actually really interesting. He's got some really good, interesting opinions. Maybe some of them you don't agree with. Some of them you do. Well, you'll see, I guess. So enjoy the video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Also, check out his YouTube in the description below. I will link it. He's been doing some podcasts about Stormgate and stuff like that, too. So go ahead and check that out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Hello. 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 Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can. Okay. Don't worry. I'm oh. completely chill. Okay. Don't, no screaming. No, no. Is it just? <laughs> I is was. It really I just was. I was hoping to make sure this wasn't going to be another versus Lorimbo Heart situation from the other week, where you, you were blowing up on him. No, no, no. That no, was don't hilarious. Worry about don't worry about it. Mm. Um, it. No, it's not about yelling. Just that it's really, really annoying because I have to type no, everything. And am, twenty yeah, people yeah. ask twenty different questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's really hard to have a proper conversation like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many minutes the rainbow says chill? The bets are off. <laughs> I'm chill, bro. I'm chill. <laughs> Yesterday night, I wanted to kill myself after losing a hundred MMR to the new patch, but <laughs> to, I I slept it off, and now I'm chilling. No, yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. talking about is. Um, well, they, of course, the game is fun or not fun. That's subjective. People are always, some people are always going to find it fun. There's nothing wrong with that. I wanted to make this clear. It's not like I think, oh, the game is objectively bad. There is no such thing. Mm -hmm. What I do say when I say many units are problematic is that any of these units, uh, it's not really the um, innovation, in my opinion. Any of these units uh, create uh, very unfun uh, interactions, or at least... Mm -hmm. Interaction that I found really unfun, frustrating, problematic, or where there is little interaction. For example, you brought up the Doombringer. Why is the Doombringer so frustrating? Because you cannot interact with it. Yeah. You cannot kill it because it has infinite health. And it has recall, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't really, like, do much about it. It just stays there, and you have to permanently defend it. Mm -hmm. This is Lorimbo. Yeah. I'm a top Stormgate player. I've gotten top 10. You can check me on my ladder to see I'm above 2100. Yeah, the, the Doombringer is like incredibly frustrating to play again. But uh, the problem is that I feel uh, because of balance whining, or uh, not balance whining, sorry, I didn't, I'm not accusing you, by the way. You have been incredibly nice. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of uh, uh, sport, uh, like, you know how in, uh, in soccer, sometimes people like get attached to a team and then they are like unreasonably attached to it like no matter what like if i if uh, if a judge calls in favor of the other team they will accuse the judge of being corrupt or something ridiculous like that yeah yeah you know that yeah, they, like they get to uh, i feel like this has already happened in stormgate especially with vanguard because every time i try to talk to a vanguard player tell me okay there is no doubt that infernal is op okay now that being said Infernal is OP contingent of very specific things, such as the Doombringer or very specific timing. And there are bigger problems. And playing against Vanguard is very frustrating. Yeah, I am just to How the fuck did you know? <laughs> Holy shit, Joey read me like a book. <laughs> I am gesturing wildly with my hands. Uh, so, like, like Anyways. stuff like, for example, the EVAC. Yep. Okay. The e the evac is not problematic itself as a unit. It's the same as the Doombringer, but it has the same problem as the Doombringer, except it comes out later. The, for example, I've seen it brought up very often. Uh, oh, let's just put the Doombringer on um, on uh, like on the spire thing, right? Yeah. And on paper, you're like, oh yeah, that solves everything. No, that doesn't solve everything. The unit is still incredibly frustrating. It just comes out later. Now, at the moment, you are not seeing many players, uh, at the, except at a very top level, like top 10 or maybe parting, uh, use the Doombringer even to 
in my opinion, 60% of his full potential. The Doombringer is so much more busted than you think. You can have it empty and flying it around. You can bait an army everywhere. You can force so many units because you can drop at three different positions at the same time and the opponent cannot deal it with it. And these things stay in the game even if you make it later. You could make it like, because the other problem is, uh, this is, I think it's worse for Infernals. I think Vanguard with the Hornet solves this problem, but the Hornet also has other problems. There is very little reliable anti-air in this game. The yeah. Shadow Flyer is one of the most inconsistent units ever. It's as like I've had games in which I have five Shadow Flyers next to a Doombringer and they don't go off. I don't know why. I cannot explain why. I, have I don't had know the same what's thing wrong with against them. Hornets as well. Yeah, they just like slowly follow it instead of actually latch on. It's, it's completely random. Yes, exactly. Like I, I don't understand what's wrong with Shadow Fly. Like what the fuck up? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even pretend to understand that I, I'm in the known about the mechanics behind that make it feel terrible. But the Shadow Fly, you have to believe me. It's not a balance problem. The Shadow Fly is strong, but half of the time it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So it feels like playing against Hornet feels fucking awful, even with the nerf. Like with with the double nerf, the Hornet nerf and the Shadow Flyer nerf. I I argue Hornet got buffed. People go on it way more now. It's way stronger. Because mm -hmm. at least before, you only needed to hit one Hornet. You only need to, to make the Shadow Flyer hit one Hornet, and more or less it will deal with at least like 50, 60, 80, 100% of the Hornets because of the AoE. Now you have to hit all of them. Yeah. So you have to, to, to win the, the towing costs against the fucking uh, Shadow Flyer AI yeah. like 50 times. I'm not going to say that, Chris. I'm not going <laughs> to encourage the racism. <laughs> uh, but like, so, okay, tell me, tell me one one unit. I can make this. I can point out the same problems for every single unit. So almost every single unit has some fucking janky mechanic that's in the game for no reason. I think the best designed unit, if you want my opinion, for Infernal. I don't claim to have like super good opinions about Vanguard because I'm biased there, of course. I think I kinda like the new Elborn. Uh, yeah, but yeah. that that also has big a big problem that encourages dead ball and camping, which I hate. I, but I think it's at least, uh, even though I think it's a balance problem and still has design problems, I think like it's cool. You know, it's a cool unit. Uh, when it goes off, you're like, oh, I have Hellborn, etc. Yeah. And now that being said, the Hellborn is a fat piece of shit uh, <laughs> that that gets stuck in everywhere. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know if you've ever tried to like go magma Hellborn. No. It's... And so no matter what, no matter what. Somehow the Elvorns are always in front and the Magmans are always stuck behind. The, you, then you're like, okay, I, I will put the Elvorns, like I will pre prepare the formation. You mm. engage and the Magmans still get stuck <laughs> anyway. It's or so the reinforcement gets stuck. They create a fucking wall in the middle of the map yeah. where you're like, oh, I really wish all of my units actually could engage the enemy instead of getting stuck. It, even with three or four, this happens. What do you think of Eva and Air Widow of mine? Same problem as before. Uh, same problem as no, it was meant as a joke, Chris. The bit up, I wasn't accusing you of being racist. Same problem as the Doom Bringer. I hate the Avac as much as I hate the Doom Bringer. Well, I hate the Doom Bringer more because it comes online earlier, it's much more of a meta problem. But don't be fooled, Gemini. I think mm -hmm. the Avac is not being used properly. No, nothing it is, is being used properly. Yet. We have so much that we have to actually be able to do. Say, like the, 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 um, the ceiling. Uh, on the EVAC uh, is insane. Yeah, yeah. The EVAC has the potential to be one of the most abusable pieces of shit ever. First off, the interaction with the Atlas is ridiculous. Yeah. I hate it. I don't know why it was... Like, it stayed... I, I think it's one of those things where they're like, oh, this is our unique thing, just like Infest. We, we you wanted know, you know to that used to be game. in StarCraft 2, right? Yeah, but it was different. Because mm, the thing about the tank... No, yeah. the, the thing about the, ta the tank EVAC, in my opinion, uh, is that uh, you couldn't juggle it as easily. Also, StarCraft, generally speaking, as uh, at the time, as uh, the meta was mute, as wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but in TVT specifically, it was completely ridiculous. I just... don't know anything about that. That uh, you you could com be completely right. Yeah, it was literally uh, only... just doom dropping a bunch of already sieged tanks and marines into a main base, and it was like so stupid. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But with the Atlas, uh, can do the same. Especially on certain maps. Like, for example, I can show you at least, like, 10 games 
Uh, no, not can. I'm joking. But at least one I can remember in particular against Mixus that they played that this uh, tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, this morning, really. Eh? Uh, in which uh, Mixu one shots my entire mina line from low ground uh, on broken ground. There was not, there was no counter play I could have done. There is no mm-hmm. warning. There is uh, like it just comes in. If I'm not watching that point specifically, it's actually outside of the vision range too. Oh right, yeah. So unless unless I'm literally watching there and I see the projectile because at least the projectile comes into vision, I lose my natural mineral line. And there's nothing I can know about that. Mm-hmm. Like things like this uh, feel li- like one of the reasons why StarCraft is really good, in my opinion, it's such a good game, uh, is because of the is very high interactive inter- interactab- interactability. Fuck, yes. <laughs> So all units uh, interact with each other. Even the area, like the so hated units in StarCraft, uh, interact with ground so much more compared to uh, to, to Stormgate. Mm-hmm. In Stormgate, every year unit is a problem. The Doombringer is impossible to catch. The Avon is impossible to catch. The only one that is not a problem, thank God, because it was a problem got nerfed to the ground, is the Spriggan. <laughs> Now, in case you weren't aware of it, the Spriggan, especially in, in, only in the Infernal Pass, because then they killed it, used to be one of the most disgusting units in the game. It was basically the Hornet at the time. Same, same problem. Very tanky, impossible to kill. They would auto split, so even Shadowfly were not that effective. Very cost efficient. You could just start to go mass Spriggans, it would be in, impossible to stop. And, and go on Sasaka sent here. Yeah. Thank you so for playing my game. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is my general problem. Like when you say when you talk talking to specific, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Any the magmadon got from a unit like the magmadon, for example, uh, is a is a in, even more interesting case. Why? Because the magmadon was a unit that was first was badly designed, and now it's well designed, but shows bad design in the engine. What I mean by that is the following. The magma with the charge is worse, at least design-wise, than the current one. I like the current one more. It feels cooler. Mm-hmm. But this one really, 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 really shows uh, the limits of the engine because it gets stuck everywhere. It cannot get on top of anything. Uh, it gets kited forever. It has very little inter- interactability. This is what I was talking about before, right? So... Really uh, quick. What what do you mean? Like yeah. it shows the limits of the engine. I get this getting stuck. I understand that, but like, isn't it like not being able to get on top of things or getting kited? Isn't that just because the unit is slow and is can't like actually catch up to units that are already micring back away from it? Yes, uh, to a point. Uh, in the sense of uh, I, the idea with this kind of uh, units uh, is, uh, uh, let's say, for example, let's say the most similar unit ever, right? like, the Ultralisk, right? Sure. The, um, I, I think it's a pretty fair comparison. So the idea will be the same, the, the following. Once you get into the enemy base, uh, uh, this this unit must be dealt with. Uh, like the, the inf- infinite kite ability is balanced in the Ultra uh, by... The, by them actually being a real threat once uh, once they get into into somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. In this game, well, uh, not many people are doing it, to be fair, so you might disagree with it. You can wall off the mineral line in a way that uh, 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 nothing can pass except your units as Vanguard. I don't know if you know this. Wait, wait, yeah, what do you mean? You can wall off your mineral line. Like, for example, let's suppose I'm attacking your third. Sure. You can put you can put well you can wall off one of the sides mm-hmm. completely, and then you can wall it off with uh, I think it's one or two squares. I'm not one hundred percent sure because it's a bit funky. Uh, and the you the nothing can pass through it except like the mm, what is called the the magmadons cannot pass through it. The brute that can pass no cannot pass through it if you do it properly. But your lancers can. And your exos can and your dogs can. Now, of course, the bulk can can't, uh, but usually it never needs to get there. Uh, the Magmadon, uh, because of pri- any building prioritization, that's another thing that really fucks the Magmadon up uh, and stuff. Even if you get on top of a base, uh, it doesn't feel good. It's not like, okay, now I get on top of a base. Like with the Ultra, if you get on top of a base, it's a disaster for the enemy. Because by the time they actually clean it up, uh, 
Mm-hmm. They, they do so much damage to buildings, they get into mineral lines, they kill bases, etc. The Magvanos has none of these things because so much of his power, his power is in trample. Right. But in, in actual DPS against buildings specifically, which they auto prioritize, uh, by the way, for some unknowable reason, <laughs> this, this doesn't happen. So the, the actual situation is uh, what, what has been an excellent, a way better alternative to Magvanos. Uh, is flame imps, which are clunky as fuck too, by the way. Yeah. This is the reason why the party... I it was not a believer. I tried the party in build and I won some games that I should not have won. I also lost games with it because I'm awful at it, but that's fair. That's fine. What is the you parting just, build? Should... I haven't seen it yet. What, what is it? Uh, Parting goes double conclave into gone drop and then prepares a death push. Well, it's not even a death push because he expands wildly behind. But I just push with poor gaunt and uh, flame imps. The idea is exactly the same. Yes. And it wins every single game like this. Jesus. Uh, Yes. The idea is the same. It's basically the same. No, he gets three, and when when he goes, uh, he gets a fourth. Okay. It's it's really hard to do, actually. You have to believe me, because I fucked it up. Really hard macro. You have to do it. It's a bit counterintuitive because of the. of the way that, like, you have to, to micro the drop a certain way because you don't want to actually sacrifice it, even for a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. You'd rather keep the units. Uh, um, like, it's it, there's a bunch of weird gimmicks that it relies on, but and also the flame memes are really hard to use. Uh, right. so they're very. They're, they're com- at the same time completely overpowered and very <laughs> underpowered in the sense that they're really strong once they actually hit anything. Yeah. But God, is it a fucking asshole to make them hit anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the change to how flame imp works. Now the like that change, for example, is another thing I don't understand. Like the fact that now you have to press the thing like twenty times or keep it pressed for a second, a full second, a full second to actually make all of them in the column control group flame. Like if it's. I don't I mean, know. I mean, I think it's just the, in general the the change they're making to make it so that way you don't just hit one button and it suddenly does everything and like you accidentally meant to just do one or something. I wish there were two. Bu- I said this in the podcast. I wish there were two buttons if that was the idea. And you yeah. and people exactly like for example the bailings have uh, you know how the bailings have the uh, blow up immediately button and also <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know how many people know this but they have a a, a toggle. Uh, for automatically targeting buildings uh, or not. By default, it's off. So, thank God. Oh, really? Do not... That's interesting. Yeah. The, by default, it's off. So, if you aim move buildings, they will never ever go on, on buildings. Uh, but I think, but... like, for Stormgate, the, like, half of the reason why this is kind of a problem right now is that in the game, they don't have it. So, that way, you can just hold a button down and it, autom- and it keeps doing that, that, uh, that action. And like, yeah, yeah, I, I think if they just add that and then reverse all of the other things, I feel like this kind of fixes this problem. But then I guess, are they doing that on purpose because they don't want the repeat rate things to happen where you technically yeah. have rapid fire exist in Stormgate? Like, is that just their whole concept of that? I, I don't know. But what I'm saying, OK, this if there is one thing to take away from this conversation is what I'm about to say. I really feel this is the most important thing mm-hmm. because I, I get triggered so much by this. Guys, OK. I am perfectly aware that this is... Let's not even call it a beta. Let's call it a pre-alpha. Yeah. If you were to be... A, because it's not a beta. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not... It's, it's a pre It's a alpha or a pre-alpha. But, okay. Let's... Even if it's an alpha, what I'm really worried about is when people tell me, Lorimbo, why are you complaining? All of these things are surely going to be changed. I'm sorry, guys. I do not... I wish I had in life such optimist uh, to believe that all of the problems that are, that, that are present in games uh, get fixed because they're so obvious to the player base. Uh, but this has not been the case. Uh, it has not been the case in StarCraft. It has not been the case in Age of Empires 4. Uh, it has not been the case in any RTS. And in fact, uh, it has not even been the case in the very same game that we're talking about. Uh, how, how can I be... How can I just hold my opinions off uh, when uh, I told them my opinion so I was like like many players for example the biggest problem in my opinion at the moment balance wise uh, Vanguard versus Inferno the only non-mirror matchup of course uh, 
the death ball problem. That problem was present even the previous patch. Yeah. I spoke to, with Monk about it. Mixu, a Vanguard player, incredibly biased towards Banga, will <laughs> gladly tell you exactly the same pro- thing. Like Mixu told Monk exactly the same thing. He said, look, at the moment Vanguard is, is underpowered, but there is a really, really big problem with death balling as Vanguard. Yeah. The, the race scales off way too well. It feels impossible to play. And the only reason why Infernal wins is because they're doing Magmadon timings. Mm-hmm. And everyone ignored him at the time, or ignored me, because everyone is so fixated on the oh, Infernal OP, Infernal OP, how can you complain about Vanguard when Infernal is OP, when Infernal is OP? And completely misses the, pro- the, the point where, where you're like, okay, I'm not arguing the balance. Fucking nerf Infernal to the ground. I don't fucking care. But you do understand that, that one, the thing, uh, you reach 10 minutes in one of the two races, uh, now feels that they just die. Yeah. It's, it's one of, like, maybe this can work in Age of Empires 4, uh, you know, where you have Castle Rush saves, uh, because you're like, okay, but at least, like, there are more civilization, the game is way more complex, it's not as bad. Uh, but in a game with only two races, to have one of the two races automatically win at 10 minutes, or not automatically win, but being heavily favored, uh, Dean Lorimbo see laser making towers and airborne the late game is totally fine. I'm not arguing that it's impossible to win SRA. I argue Elaser played that perfectly and showed that there is definitely a possibility for the Inferno. That's absolutely true. I'm not even gonna deny it. Uh, even though I think Elaser got ahead in some early games, uh, and uh, like it's way harder than it looks. That's what I can say. And also, even if that, he... just the description of that as being the solution to a, the late game, does, yeah. it, does that is that the kind of late game that we want in this game where it's just you yes. hiding behind a bunch of huge siege siege units and a bunch of turrets? Like, that doesn't sound like a very healthy way to put the game, essentially. <laughs> Thank you, Gemini. This is why I like talking with you so much is because you actually understand what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Like, this is not a balance issue. You're like, okay, now, one of the... T- now, okay, now, before we had a single death ball problem, now we have two death balls. Technically balanced. It's now both players camp and go for late game death balls. Is that an improvement? Do you think that's an improvement? Does anyone think that's an improvement? Because if they do, then we have wildly different opinions about, uh, about RTS. Yeah, like, there, there, they- there, there needs to be something to like make it so that way we're encouraged to actually split everything off and like actually have fights around the map later on into the game and not but like, that's the thing where it's like how do you actually do that like what are the the solutions to make it so that way the the abilities that we have in the the actual armies don't just amplify using them First all off, in a giant death ball instead of I like love Gemini, spreading out you know? and stuff like that <laughs> uh the med the med deck mostly the what? uh the med deck is the most yeah, problematic yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly and the airborne for the for the inferno. As I said, I like the airborne as like it's a cool unit. Like I cannot deny it. I, I yeah. really like it's cool design. It looks cool. It feels cool. Except when it gets stuck 20 times, of course. <laughs> but like, at least like you know, as as an idea, it's yeah, a yeah. really cool unit. Yeah, I do like the hellborn. In, pra- in practice, the hellborn is a fat piece of shit that gets stuck everywhere. And when <laughs> it works, it's incredibly oppressive. Mm-hmm. Smaller control group limitations. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Rimbo, actually. Let's be honest. It would solve the problem. <laughs> let's be honest. While we're at it, how about we make it so that we have to click on each unit to be able to cast the spell? How about that? You know what? There's a game I think that maybe did this that was actually very famous for its incredible longevity and very interesting late game situations. Oh, I wonder what the that fruit. could be. <laughs> the brute mm. were fixed. The <laughs> brute were fixed. Okay, like I actually, you know what, uh, Gemini? I'm yeah. gonna say something incredibly controversial. Sure, sure, go. For I it. agree with you. Mm. The game needs a disruptor. Now, not the yes. disruptor itself. Uh, not the disruptor itself. Agree. Because, yes. because that's fucking awful. Yes, yes, that's yes. That specific unit. Uh, but the game does need area of denial. At the moment, pay yes, attention yes. to this. Like, think about this. Uh, there is nothing preventing you. Like this is one of the most frustrating interaction. There is nothing preventing you from standing as Vanguard or even as Infernal, honestly, on standing on a health camp and just 
camping that spot. <laughs> and I swear, if if I ever take like, have you ever tried try this in your next game? Yeah, if yeah. you ever have to attack the base uh, like that's close to the health camp. Yeah, yeah. Okay, kill the health camp first and just attack it from that position. Mm -hmm. Bro brother, it's <laughs> it's really because there is no way of actually. Yeah, you, like, you can't force put, people off of positions. Yeah, there is no way. Like I, I, I bring up the health camp example because that makes it really obvious. Yeah. But there is nothing that actually forces you to go away. Mm -hmm. Or even to split your army at all. Like people say like flame imps. I think flame imps are the closest thing we have to that. Well, you could, fair, I mean, tank of uh, micro could do it as well, can't you? Like you just move the tanks forward, get the shots off and then lift them back behind the, the, the wall or whatever. Yes and no. In the sense that it's it's like yeah this is what I'm talking about like the game quote unquote feels decent at the moment uh, and I I don't think it feels decent but a lot of people because there are so many like problematic units interacting with each other and sometimes a problematic unit is so more problematic much more problematic than another thing uh, then then uh, like it, it covers the problem as in uh, the tanky vac is broken uh, or very problematic. Uh, and it's so broken that it covers the other problem. But but you have to think ahead, Gemini, right? So, so if we agree that the tanky vac is a problem, then we have to look at the game without the tanky vac. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, Magma on Storms does. Five Magma on the nice spaces, you have to respect the standard ability. That's not what I'm referring to, Drag. First off, that's not as true as I would like to be. You can yeah, tank yeah. a surprisingly amount of Magma huh? you can uh, You can also just, like kite them away like sure it does yeah. force them off but then you're also committed to then trying to take that fight which is not i think what we're trying to talk about we're saying that i mean yeah this is, this is what i think you're saying is that we we need some sort of zone control or space control that is non-committal from us if we start yeah, to yeah. charge five magmadons toward their army once the charge is done they're kiting backwards and then they're just killing the magmadons right away yeah and then like we then that became a, a the wrong decision for us to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an incredibly like it's technically out of denial, but that's an incredibly expensive one. Yeah, because don't magma those first off. If you you do force him to go off, and then you do zero damage, you lose five magma dons. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's it's not realistic. This is what I was talking about before with the, the magma on design problem. Like what what is the what is the idea of the magma on? What, what is it supposed to do? Is it a tanky unit because it doesn't tank shit? <laughs> It gets too shotted by Hexos. <laughs> is it an area of denial units? Uh? Then it's way too expensive and like it's very wild because it gets stuck and it's like very does it actually do that properly, in my opinion? It's like uh, is it uh, like what is what was the unit? Like before uh, the the Magmanons had a very, a very clear identity. The Magmanon was something that was both used to tank and to do area of effect damage, and you couldn't dodge it because of the charge. It was CC. It was it was basically a tank era era of effect. It's like like basically some fire cape in uh, in League of Legends. The idea is you get in the middle of the enemy, and the unit itself doesn't actually deal that much damage. But thanks to the OE and just being general annoyance, uh, it gets a lot of value that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlas and demons are supposed to do it, but it becomes a death ball in, instead. I don't think they do it well. That's the problem because they are not yeah. area based. Like, the Atlas is a bit area-based, but not really. Oh, yeah, they're super good. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mama, Magma and Gone Drops are incredibly good. There is no doubt about it. But it's the, the, there is the Magma on identity to be dropped. Is that the whole point? That, I don't <laughs> think that's... I, don't, yeah, yeah. I really don't think that was what they had in mind. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and what I say, most units are very generic, blended. They don't have a very a strong sense of identity that's what i mean for example right I, I can give you another example and let's talk about in my opinion the most egregious example in the entire game the lancer yeah yeah what what is the lancer what does the lancer do what is it supposed to do and what does it actually do so my understanding of it from the way they gave him passive etc was that the Lancer was supposed to be a mineral dump unit that is pretty tanky and serves as a front line. Nothing wrong with that design. A bit boring. The guy is boring, but, you know, you don't have to always have exciting units. It's a pretty interesting design. Like a pretty fine design. Like, 
I'm going to be defend that. Why the fuck then does the Lancer outrun everyone else? <laughs> Have you ever seen a front line that, that become, switches from a tank position to mauling your entire army, zooming yeah. at insane speeds? Yeah. Like the whole point of a tank is that it's slow. Yeah. Or at least slower than most other units. Yeah. It's a Zillow twist. Yeah, it is a Zillow twist team. Like Zillow. But the problem with Zillow is that they are sur- somewhat fragile in the late game. Like, that's the thing. The Zillow is balanced by the fact that it scales uh, poorly. Oh, somewhat Finally, poorly. Terrans like, have zealots. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Like, it scales somewhat poorly. Like, for example, once I have my... Like, even as... Uh, as uh, like, fucking uh, uh, Zerg... Yeah, like the charges are really annoying as Rambas, for example. Well, I'm fine with that. But in actual fight, uh, they don't tank that much. They die pretty quickly to to bailings or to to um, um, to roaches or to hydras or to whatever, right? Like that's they, they're not. But the lancer, the value of the lancer actually increases. You never stop making lancers because they're so good at every stage of the game. They're excellent in the early game, they're excellent in the mid game, and they're excellent in the late game. Yeah. The Brute has a similar problem, but it just it, it doesn't scale as well. You make them as a mineral dump because you don't have anything else. It's excellent for run buying, right? But then in the actual fight, it doesn't perform nearly as well with the Lancer. And I think the pro- the core problem of the Lancer is the is the fact that um the 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 two upgrades that he has, the two passives. Yeah. Right, the the minus three damage from everything is insanely busted in early game, and the, I'm gonna become more resistant and faster. It's insanely, and I also do more like attack faster. It's insanely busted in the in the mid to late game. Yeah, I think like especially the fact that they are passives and that you don't actually have to actively think about what you, when or when what you're doing with that for how good it is i think it's it's extremely like it's just so good like the fact that the fact that the the passive is also just like there's literally zero downside to anything with it where it's like you get attacked and then you attack and move faster which also doesn't really make sense at all by the way (laughs) like why why does why is it that you get attacked and suddenly you want to move and and attack faster like i don't really get that but then like it's like okay you're you're in the middle of a fight it, it, it like dissuades the enemy from wanting to take the fight because not because o- now you're doing something which is supposed to be punishing the player and killing their units, but it's actually making them better. Imagine how fucked up the matchup will be if Infernals didn't have early drop. Exactly, this yeah. is what I'm talking about. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. The, the problem is uh, when you, when people say Infernal is of P, I don't disagree with that statement, uh, but there is like Infernal is of P, but there, it's a very frail foundation. Like, it's, it's a very frail foundation. And I feel like there are pro- systematic problems that are not being addressed. This is why I lose hope in the developer, because this problem was uh, uh, explicitly told to them multiple times in the previous patch. And the only thing that they got away from the previous patch to this one was car were oppressive, which is true. Fiends were oppressive, which is true. Let's nerf cars and fiends. So, like, they, it, they, say, um, they say, we are not interested in balance, we're more interested in design, but the actual patches themselves only serve to to they, they seem like balance patches, like band aid fixes. Mm-hmm. When people bring them up problems, or like I will, I can talk about one hour more. I'm not gonna bore you with it about Teamfest, how bad of a mechanic it is. Oh, but once is, again, yeah. But but once again, they they are like, oh, this is our thing. This is what makes us as different from when we have RTS. So we are going to keep it no matter what. Well, and, did they say that? Yes. W- where? Uh, Monk said it in the interview with uh, Biomulf. I think it in, that, exact- in that interview, I, like he did say that he like he explained how yeah like it, it has its like d- downfalls free units in other in StarCraft 2 and stuff like that but they they think it can they can make it work in Stormgate but i don't think it he came across as saying that we are 100% keeping it no matter what no i distinctly recall something along the line of uh, the infest is one of the things that makes our game unique 
maybe I'm not losing it. I, I think he okay. said I, that he like it's a cool ability and it feels fun to use, which I agree with. I actually I think, think I think Infest feel like when you're using it, it feels cool and I, I no, it's I a disagree. unique. Okay, well, I, I personally I, think it is cool, but I, like I don't think he was necessarily saying that like it's going to be in the game 100%. Like I think okay. they're still feeling it out. That's what I got from what he was saying. But he he like wants he think he he they they do want to try to make it work is is the the side that he's on. Uh, one second, uh, Lorin, but what do you think Infest could be an active and passive? Active, uh, XX cooldown. Infest one unit, so when he dies, he spawns fins with full white health. Passive, while on cooldown, spawns fins with time like a broodling. You know? uh, we could do this, but then we run into another problem that I think most people have not talked about. It was mostly a problem with um, with the previous patch, actually. Uh, because they dumped it out. They dumped it down. And this was the reason why the guns were changed, by the way. Uh, most units of Infernals are the, in the previous patch uh, are uh, reliant on uh, on uh, spells. Uh, the Gaunt is reliant on a spell. The Brute used to be reliant on a spell. Uh, the Magma is reliant on using the spell. Uh, well, now we have the Magma, which doesn't have it. The Weaver is reliant on using a spell. Or multiple one with if you can count consume. Uh, it's a like I guess if that like if they wanted the idea of easier macro, like harder to control armies, I guess you could argue in favor of it. But to me, the other patch felt that I was like I just had to juggle twenty different spells. Like oh, are they going steamed? Yes, they are because the, the, at the time the previous patch you needed steam to actually infest. All right. Or to invest with the bounce specifically. What, uh, what do you think about that, by the way? Like just having it being gated behind the like the stim and uh, ability. I think guns are uh, almost useless at that stage of the game, so I don't mm. think it solves the problem. It just nerfs like. Okay. Well, it solves the problem in the sense that games don't snowball and hard. Uh, right. But it's just uh, you might as well make okay. Infest now does zero damage. That would also technically solve the problem <laughs> you know what i mean right like it's it's uh it's, it's what i consider a banded fix so instead of actually you know thinking okay maybe the mechanic has to be there like for example i'm not necessarily against it i think it works excellently on a dragon on a spell even though the spell is useless now <laughs> but the dragon for example i think the the, the emphasis is really cool we could make more about poison uh, the the dragon has a very cool interaction. That's one of the most in, insanely cool things. Eh? Mm -hmm. Hello, Mixo. Uh, Hello, like, Mixo. Uh, the, do you know how the dragon spells work? What you you throw the infest on and then you suck it back up to get health? Yeah, exactly. That's that, I really like that. Yeah, 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 because that that I interacts with the infest in a fresh way, right? You're like, oh, <laughs> now suddenly the infest is not about spawning fiends. Eh? Right. It's about uh, uh, damage over time. Right. Like poison, some kind of poison thing. I think that would that would be absolutely fine as a, um, a, a as an alternative. I think that's cool design, for example. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't think you have to completely remove it from the game, but the the, the free fiend thing, uh, in my opinion, will always be a, stop fucking doing this. We we'll always <laughs> we we'll always be either over oppressive or feel pretty useless. Yeah, no, like, I... no one gets the dragon for the infest. Yeah, I also, like, in general, feel like Infest should not be in, like, it, either not in the game or not as, like, not as strong as it is or in as early as it is. Like, I think, like, I thought that they should just remove it from being able to activate on creeps or something like that or just not be able to be done in the early game to, like, prevent the, the snowballing early game or whatever. But, like... I think in general it feels better as a as a as a ability when it is the, some active thing that you are doing instead of just passively all the time getting fiends with the the units that are dying. Like it feels yes. more interesting and rewarding when you when, like I, I I liked it better behind the upgrade because it felt like you were okay. I'm now activating the thing where then it will allow me to get units in this short period of time instead of just no matter what's happening. And I also, yes. or just removing it from the gaunt and just making it be the, only the top call down ability or something like that, where it's like in this area, this is when this is going to happen. And I know exactly when it will. And my opponent also will kind of know exactly when it will. Like that yeah. makes it feel more interesting. 
it, from my perspective. Uh, yes, but I will say then you would have another as a small problem. Well, I, th- I think it's a big problem, but you are an elitist, so maybe you don't. You think it's a small problem <laughs> that as Inferna, your first two units that you can make for most of the games uh, are uh, are uh, only actually getting value if you're using them in a specific in a very specific way. Like Vanguard's, uh, like the Lancer, no, is so, a unit that. So also, like on top of that, though, is that if you do that, you do need to make the like the the brute and the gaunt and stuff have its own power outside of yeah. not having it like that's yeah that's assumed that's what i was putting that okay, I, didn't, okay, I, didn't, okay. I didn't say that second part i guess but yeah no if, yeah, if, yeah, they, no, if they do that then yes there would need to be some other thing happening to make it so that we brutes and gaunts as your core units feel better as units instead of just suiciding themselves every yeah <laughs> every exactly fight. exactly like, but once again, this is not a balancing. I'm not like, oh, like, let's make Brute yeah, up yeah, 200,000 yeah. health so we can finally yeah, yeah. get a usual. It's like, it feels terrible to have most of your army be like cheap units that just suicide and never actually even hit the enemy. Yeah. Like, at least Zerg. With Zerg, you can argue it's the same. But Zerg, has, the, the reason why the link works excellently eh, is because it allows you so much potential. Right? You can surround, it has high damage, you have the bailing that interacts really nicely. Unfortunately, the, the thing doesn't work nearly as well. In mm-hmm. this game, it does. You can't really do the stuff that you can do with the links, uh, uh, in with yeah. the fiends. Uh, they like they're really weak against uh, um, certain kinds of uh, static defense, especially the, the lancer, lancer tower. Are tower. Yeah, the lancer turrets are just brutal against everything, bro. <laughs> I've had, I've had like you can test this out, but you can have like I don't know ten gones. Uh, and like two brutes against a single lancer tower with overcharged bobs and the, the overcharge the, the tower itself which is one unit will win 20 every single time <laughs> don't even have to fucking focus the gods but if you do focus the gods then it's even yeah, I was, more I was find it funny when i go in with a gaunt drop and i see them defending with an exo turret and then like in my mind i'm like oh that should i this might be a little rough for the gaunts and then i look back at it and then when my army's on the other side and i look back at the, the drop and i see the, the turret dead and all the scvs dead i'm like oh nice that was pretty sick then i'm pretty good <laughs> yeah because the exo turret is terrible yeah no. they, yeah the lancer turret defenses are way harder to deal with yeah uh I guess suiciding and sacrifice is about the infernal race identity. I understand that. I'm not arguing in favor, like against that. But then you have to make it uh, actually fun to play. Yeah, <laughs> like but, that, but then the other me. the other thing with yeah. the two though is that like the whole sacrificing unit thing as their identity do, doesn't that just promote the idea that the units themselves have to be shit? Because if they yeah. weren't, then you would just be stomping everything, and like that doesn't, you know, you can't put those two together. So, I think that like the the fact that the whole idea is that you are supposed to be constantly trading and constantly sacrificing units, and then constantly getting all the fiends off of infest, like this is like similar to like the whole Warpgate debate with StarCraft Two, where people saying that because Warpgate exists, gateway units have to be shit. It's like the same thing here, where because Infest is here, you need to have units that can't just walk over the map by themselves. You need that in it as well. Yeah, but hopefully, I would like uh, the game to dodge another Protoss. <laughs> yeah. We are still in time. Like Protoss, That's why, that's why I'm, I'm saying thinking. that I think Infest shouldn't be as powerful as it is, and that they should rework yeah. some of the, the units to make it feel like the army itself can do something without having to just get a massive wall of fiends come out which like, then by the end game also don't do anything by the way <laughs> we have zerg protos and terran protos what's next? Yes! <laughs> true, true. next we have protos protos yes <laughs> like like we are still in time uh, to dodge the protos debate like this, this is what I, like people like see as vanguard as infernal as any bro this game is in fucking alpha. Why the fuck are you sticking to a range and balance running already? Please! We should be allies and telling them, please, we don't want to have Terra yeah. Protoss and Zerg Protoss. Exactly. We don't want... And, and hopefully, it's not going to be Protoss Protoss at the third race. <laughs> but, hey, man, like, they said the units how, are going to be yellow. Like, how how come, like, these people from, from StarCraft were like, you know what we really made well in StarCraft? You know what's the best design? We're like, 
wow, Protoss really was well designed, wasn't it? <laughs> like, we really hit the mark on that one. Let's do it two more times. Uh, like, what? No! Like, because, <laughs> like, even at the moment, uh, Infernal, uh, by design, uh, has to be either busted, and when it's busted, everyone hates it, uh, or underpowered, everyone still hates it because it's so easy to play. Eh? Mm. <laughs> it's so bullshit and gimmicky. It's literally Protoss. It's literally Protoss. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no it's matter true. what, it's, it's good. It's go- and then the other guy has the death ball too. <laughs> so it's, it's also kind of like Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, shit, he has got the carrier army. I'm dead. <laughs> like, <it's- laughs> Yeah, I I generally agree with the the main points of the the death balls being too oppressive in late game. The units in general don't feel like they have that much identity, and uh, I and Fest is weird and should be re- reworked. I think. But do you disagree with anything that I've said about the problems of the game? Um. I will say that I think you the, the how you said it um you said that the units are like a lot of them are busted because of some of the mechanics they have but not, but then I said that I think you still need to have some busted things in the game at first just to see how it works out and just to have something that is fun to play because the units are kind of OP and broken it's cool to do to play with that to make people want to play I think that is still something that is needed in this in this phase as as assuming that like the units themselves have some kind of identity with it as well where like you have a unit that is feels cool you like the idea of it it has a good role and it feels strong in that role that is true i don't disagree with that uh, but like i the, the problem is that i i cannot avoid comparison to zero spaces which went way wilder have you seen the design of some of i don't know how much you've played uh, but Zero Space has some fucking insane ideas. Like, actually, fuck, I don't know where the fuck they they got them out. Like, there's so many original and very, very busted ideas. <laughs> and the, that, like, that created a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think they did it better because, like, the game was f- more fun. I didn't like that. I thought that one also had 20 problems, 20,000 problems. But it was better than Core and Stormgate. Like, I had the terrible opinions on Zero Space, huh? but my opinion improved because every patch I will be like, okay, they know what they're doing. They're like, okay, they, they know that this unit is problematic and they're reworking it in a nice way. And if every patch I felt like, wow, they really like the patches are cool, even though they were a bit too frequent, like everyday patches, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, that was but interesting in, to keep getting those pings. <laughs> in Stormgate, every time I watch, I look at the patch, I'm like, they have no clue about the game, do they? It's either some, but like some things are good, or some uh, some other things are like okay, they are band aiding uh, instead of uh, addressing the problem, they're band aiding and everything, and then they tell me, oh wow, but that's because we can only make major changes uh, in the um, in the in the big patches, uh, mm-hmm. and we don't do balance changes. But to me, all it looks like every time I read the patches is that they want to make balance changes and not design changes. Uh, it's not a single unit. I think the only design change that was actually successful or cool. Uh, was the Elbor getting like the up up cost, up damage, up everything, right? Yeah. Th- that made it feel actually more in fact. I think that was the only successful one. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think in general, like, I think we should, like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, the more you we just talk about that, the fact that they're maybe a little off on some of the changes, I mean, that's, it's going to make them realize, okay, we should just probably do it in a, in a different way or, you know, have more focus on certain things with how we do our changes or whatever. So, I mean, I, I, again, it's still so early and you, I know you were saying this as the thing that you hate to hear, but yes, it is so early and like, there's still so many things that can be changed. So it's like, I'm not going to just like lose hope all of a sudden and be like, okay, it's over. Like it's, it's, we're done. Like they didn't, they failed to change the things that we said that we wanted changed in like one or two times in like the super early alpha, essentially of what it is. So it's like, now it's all, all hope is lost. Like, I think you just like, you know, have more pressure on them and just continue to voice some of these opinions. And then it's, well, surely I'll things gl- will be changed. I'll gladly be the one bitch that the community hates if that makes the game better. If that if that is one person of what I'm saying can be actually taken, like like for me the like the most the most uh, um what's it called one of the most uh, 
uplifting uh, and flattering things uh, mm-hmm. that ever happened in my life uh, was with zero space. Uh. With zero space, I I was so annoyed at the game because the game has a lot of problems. I wrote 13 pages, 7,000 words. I wrote Jesus a fucking Christ. manifesto about what I thought about the game, in which I go in deep about everything that it has, about the problems, the nuance, all of the things. I could have gone for 10k words more, uh, um, etc. Um, et and one of the most flattering things that happened, of course I was polite, I wrote it well. It wasn't like a fucking uh, rambling manifesto. It was yeah, yeah. Brett, I, I made it spell-checked by 10 different people. <laughs> we changed the most uh, aggressive ones, like most aggressive ones, <laughs> to, to really hit the nail and th- do you know what they did i couldn't believe this the the fucking zero space devs they took the manifesto they made a fucking five hour of meeting and tired of my manifesto the, an entire meeting for the whole fucking design team mm. where they just look over and discuss my manifesto and they're like oh yeah this, this lorimbo is right we agree on this and we're like, yeah we agree on about 80 to 9 percent of what you said some of the things we disagree which is completely fine of course but it was so flattering mm. because i felt like all of my work was like okay these guys are serious i i'm sorry i don't want it to that Frost Giant needs to hit my opinion, but at least hit Mixus' opinion, or Partingo's p- opinion, or Lucy Front's opinion, or Vortex's opinion. If you don't want to listen to mine because I'm not good enough, or I'm too whiny, like the, the, I don't. It doesn't have to be me, but at least I, if someone told me, "Wow, um, uh, this guy, like the guys at Frost Giant, really listen to me." Eh? Yeah, sure. It, but they took it from Reddit. The fucking brute change was taken from Reddit, but they want to implement the changes that we are suggesting. I don't know what to say about that. That, that mm-hmm. of course, makes me lose hope. Because I don't feel like they're taking this seriously. I feel like the, the overall feeling I got from Frost Giant, the sign team, has always been the same. Every patch that they have some gra- giant plan, like final plan. And they're basically dead cultist. They're like, no, everything is going to be all right. We have the final design already in mind. Everything is going to work fine. You just have to trust and believe. And meanwhile, you're running towards a cliff. I'm like, no, stop, please. You're running towards a cliff. They're like, no, 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 bro. Trust. Just trust us. We are going to fly. No, I'm like, no, bro. You're really running towards a cliff. It's not It's not for lack of faith, but bro, I really have to warn you. You're running towards a cliff. And they're like, no, 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 no. Trust. Trust. And this is the feeling that I got. So, did you write a manifesto for the the Stormgate feedback yet? Uh, I I'm considering doing it, but I don't know if it will be taken seriously. That's the problem. I mean, I, the problem is that but, the, the discussion is so contaminated with balance whining uh, that no matter how I try to explain that I do think Infernal is overturned at the moment, uh, but I still think that Vanguard has so incredibly designs that make it frustrating as fuck. Uh, they're always going to be read as uh, Infernal uh, infernal player whines because he's not winning a lot enough. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. I mean, and- if, you, we, if, I mean, if you just structure it in a way where you're just talking about the, just the general overall problems and it's not about balance, like, I don't feel like people are going to jump on you. Like, what? Like, we can just... Like, that's not... I don't know, but like you said, uh, you said you talk, you like you talk to Monk specifically about some of these problems and the other pros are talking to Monk and whatnot about these problems. I talked. I talk, I had the discussion with Monk during. Uh, I think it was uh, the early part of Alpha Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the one with cars, uh, to be clear. Right, right, right. It wasn't. Uh, it was a public one, and we were in a Discord chat. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a one-on-one. It wasn't an interview. I don't want to mislead anyone because Monk is gonna come from my ass and say, "Hey, Lorimbo, <laughs> we never interviewed you." I, I want to be very clear about this. Uh, uh, like in the. But I mean, like, uh, like, surely, like, the more that we, like, you just post about it or just, like, specifically no, try I, to talk about... Do you want me to be Apsaya? Do you think Apsaya... <laughs> well, you think if I just post the, the same wine 20 times, no, 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 I'm no, not no. taking more serious. <laughs> like, you actually you actually want me to be Apsaya, don't you? I mean, like, I mean, yes and no, but, like... I don't know. I feel like if if the if you think that the the devs are not listening to what the pros are saying, then I feel like that is something that needs to be brought to their attention. 
<laughs> Wait, do you know the meme about this? Uh, no. Uh, no. The, re- the, w- the way Mixu got to Master 1 was that he got me in ladder mm-hmm. and uh, one base Lancer only in me. And the one easily because that, that shit is busted. And then posted a screenshot in the same in the Discord I was in. He posted a screenshot. Wow, guys, I reached Master One. And the worst <laughs> part is that Mix is perfectly aware that what he did was cheap and the build is busted. He <laughs> <laughs> just did it to, to deal to me. Oh my god. <clears throat> But yeah, I don't know. I feel like in general, like, yes, it's still super early. You hate hearing that, but it is super early. I mean, sure. Yeah, they haven't listened to everything yet. But like, yes, there's still a lot that has to be added still. There's no tier three. There's no third race. Like, I mean, things (laughs) will settle eventually to where we can then kind of, you know, move on from that point. Yeah, but if you, that's what I don't understand. If the game already has huge problems with uh, a limited amount of units. Why do you think that making getting more units will fix the problem? I think it will make it twenty times worse. It's a, like that's what I, everyone is saying. To me the tier three thing is a point against this. The tier three thing is uh, wow. They have a super. They have two races. Maybe wh- how many units are there in total? Twenty, and they still feels terrible. And they have so many problems. Imagine when we have 40, 50, 60 units, uh, mm-hmm. and we have three races and tier three, or maybe four races. Bro, I can already see the future. <laughs> I mean, but like, yes, yeah, so, but if you add more units in that have actual like more defined roles, like maybe there are units in tier three that actually break up the the death ball stuff that we that we just don't know about maybe there's mechanics that they have put into the game that they're going to put into the game that will make it so that way some of these uh, you know aggressive or abusive or oppressive uh mechanics feel better or, or worse or whatever like yes I, there's there's ways I, that the yes. things can be like if a game is not complete there will be things that feel wrong about it so like the 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 pessimism i think should at least be like toned back a tiny bit until they have all the things in the game that they you know said they will try to put in and then that's when everyone if it really starts to look like it's going to shit then you can kind of like you know feel that things are hitting the fan but like when it's so incomplete like you know i can't be just like oh it's terrible it's going to be the worst thing in the world like it's not complete yet so it's just like wait for it to be more complete and then you know, then we can go and, you know, go crazy okay. and light the house can, on fire. If t- shit is just absolutely awful. Can I tell you a shrink? Sorry, can I tell you a story? Okay. Okay. My mother is a psychologist. Okay. She has a unending faith in psychology as they fix to a lot of issues, right? Okay. And I've seen this interaction personally. I've had this interaction. When people are like, well, I tried psychotherapy, eh? And uh, it didn't quite work. I didn't feel comfortable with it. Or, like, it, it didn't achieve what I thought it was going to achieve. So I switched to a pharmaco- ph- pharmacological solution, for example. And then it seems to be working better. And my mother always says, well, you, maybe you have not been to a good uh, shrink, to a good psychologist. And, uh, and the guy's like, well, I've been to 10 of them. And she's like, try an 11th. And the problem with this, uh, with this logic, uh, is that it's not, falsifiable like no amount of like you could have 20 patches from now tier 3 and stuff and you could still say maybe they're gonna fix everything next patch like i can never argue against that i mean that's always true like it's but, even but, in yeah, Star sh- sure but like i think that's like taking the point and exaggerating it because i said that where it's like yes let's wait until they have everything added and then if it still feels terrible then yes that is when we you know then you can be like okay this looks terrible but like i'm not saying to just continually infinitely say oh they'll fix it they'll fix it they'll fix it like at least wait until things are added and the game feels more complete before just being like okay it's dead it's done it's over there's no chance okay will i get official permission from the frost giant team before i can actually give my feedback okay jokes aside, i don't think the game is gonna do badly i think the game is gonna do well because it's a new game it's exciting i don't think the game is gonna do well long term i do not think that most pro players are gonna uh, switch for for a long time it's it's gonna be similar to age of empires 4 i like age of empires 4 now after three years 
But can you argue that the game was a, a success? Wait, or did sorry, they wait, achieve wait, the... What game? Age of Empires 4. I don't oh, know how I, much I, you know about it. I mean, I just don't like Age of Empires, so... <laughs> yeah, I, but I don't like Age of Empires either. I tried it at the start, it was terrible. Huh? And now the game is pretty good, I will say. I played a lot of it. I got Conquer and stuff. Uh, but after three years, the population is, is all back at Stark after Age of Empires 2. You can look at the Steam thing. Like, so that's... Th th that's my point. I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, it is true. You have a lot of time, but you're also on, like, I, I know a lot of people that are just turned off. I can tell you, I'm not going to name any names, Gemini, but I can tell you that someone, at least someone from Katowice, so that's why I cannot say who, someone from Katowice, I talked with them about my opinions about the game, and I didn't say anything about the, the Katowice cat qualification. And the guys, the, the person just said, yeah, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to rescind my application because I think you're right and the game is terrible. And now, that granted, and, and that actually, that's not the only person because it happens to, I happen to know that originally there were 11 people planned minus probe. And now we saw 12 with probe and we only got six. And Dark didn't even play the game, to be honest. It was very clear to me. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, the, yeah, Lorimbo killing the pros in one pro at a time. You're like, you're saying, wow, we are so much time. No, Gemini, the pro players already are forming opinions on this. Yeah, it's very hard to adjust because of the hotkeys. That's true. That's an excellent point by Mixo. Like, to me, they got some of their priorities are completely wrong. I don't know what to say, tell you, Gemini. Uh, I don't get that you can be so positive about it when every patch is worse than the previous. I think the game was way better. Like, this, this is the insane uh... part. I think the game was way better when Infernal just go out, came out. I think the game has gotten significantly worse. I don't... How, though? I feel like the game... I mean, I don't think that's true. What What, what is... Yeah, I do think. What, what, how is it worse now than what... It, like, we... I, the game I, was so much more interactive in there because the do, drops were were uh, were good, but flaming like the, that when when uh, Infernal came out, it felt like the game was actually as you described. A lot of broken things that somehow balanced each other. The flaming were broken. The tanky vaga had, had no had no no counter whatsoever. Infest was insane because it even affected fiends uh, in Infernal versus Infernal, and somehow. I never had as much fun in the game as that moment. It was e great. So, I, can I put a point on that where that could just be yeah. because you're still like learning something new about the game and it's still very early and you were just kind of enjoying the fact that the game was still new and you were, you know, learning all these things? Because, I mean, looking at I the game... I was rank five. Learning I was the... rank five at the moment, at that time. Okay. The world. I understand. But, like, the games at that in that phase were like... It was the same thing every time, and it was like extremely, just totally whack out of nowhere. Like the, the fact that it was, it was just the fiend battles the entire time in Infernal vs. Infernal. The fact that it was always just flame imps destroying everything or or whatnot, or just getting the big lancer Vulcan. It was. It was. I mean, what is? Are the games any different now? Every game. Have you ever seen any Infernal versus Infernal ever? It goes exactly the same way every single time. Yeah, but what? there's still at least other things that are happening. Some like I mean, there's still different oh. strategies or whatnot being played. Is there not? I like... still remember Mixu, Mixu versus Parting. You can watch those games. Those were peak Stormgate. <laughs> uh, so many cool things. Parting going mute, as dropping everywhere. Mixu with the Atlas drops and the split. The game was so much cooler. Like I, I've watched the tournament. I've watched the best players in the world, supposedly play in the tournament right now. I don't think anything has been even close to as beautiful as Mix versus Parting was. God, that was so so many good games. God, that was so good. Like, no, Gemini, I'm sorry. I completely disagree. They killed all of the fun stuff and they put bland, boring stuff that just dead balls, just stat sticks and the, the skill checks and stuff. It was... Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. We, we, well, okay, we agree to disagree on this. Yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I think if they're adding more things, it will generally be better overall, and I think it's too early to go all doom or gloom on it when there's still so much to be added. That's just, yeah. The flow I think of the I like game the back... Flow of the game. Yeah. Yes. I can say that much, I think, that, yes, I feel like the flow did feel a little bit better then, but I also think that 
the game back then was also it didn't for me feel any satisfying to play because there was nothing that you were really it didn't feel like there was like much macro that you're doing like the macro was very simplest that, like, that, there was no macro mechanics there's no reason to like go back to my my base i i got very bored of that at that point where it do, did just feel like i was just doing the same thing battering batting my head against the the wall or whatever and then um it, not feeling like i had anything back at home to do or whatever so like it didn't feel I'm that satisfying for me to play back then I'm talking uh, uh, before the cars were even buffed, game jinx. Huh? I'm talking the very first patch in which Infernal uh, was a thing. I'm sorry, guys. I think you guys are copers. I think this has been the worst. I know, actually, no. It's better than the previous one, actually. The car one actually made I legitimately quit the game. This is definitely not the worst patch, by the way, because I I don't think you were here when it was just the Vanguard. Vanguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, of of the cannon rushes the and the the fucking the yeah. bubble, the blue bubble. You the did bubble. not experience yeah, yeah. that. That was yeah, the worst. <laughs> I mean, out of all all of the patches, I think uh, this one is the second worst. Well, there are only three really of the patches that I experienced as Infernal. Uh, I think the first one was the best. This one is medium but still bad and the, the one with the car I, I just quit the game it was terrible i think most people actually quit the game during the car i know bloody did for people who know bloody is yeah 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 the, the december uh, yeah exactly Mix yeah. is so right about that yeah 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 well yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I think i think the current patch is definitely i think they have been improving overall each time i think yeah, I mean, we'll agree to get disagree on that. That I think this yeah, patch yeah. is Yeah, yeah, we just we just one. have fundamentally diff we just have fundamentally different opinions. Yeah, yeah. Like it's I don't know, maybe you guys are more used to the Turtle Fiesta, but at the moment the game feels like I, if I have to play against Jagger now, Jason playing on two bases for 8 minutes and three bases for the next 20 and still winning the game and then against my seven. <laughs> like I I I I will go crazy. I will go crazy and then like start to say about how much uh, how good uh, the game is uh, like it was insane uh, like it's i don't know bro yeah yeah anyways. of course you can have fun uh, with the way you play me so yeah sorry go <laughs> anyways i think this was a, a solid talk i appreciate yeah. your points but uh i'm gonna go play a couple more games and uh, yeah yeah absolutely this was way too long yeah. a little bit <laughs> that's totally fine goodbye guys sir. yep uh, see you later uh, see ya Oh, you can oh okay <laughs> i thought he was gonna say something else <laughs> i didn't mean to just kick him off like that but anyways that was the rimbo everybody hope you enjoyed the discussion about the the current state of stormgate and some other things and whatnot so yeah if i end up uploading that to youtube then like and subscribe <claps> boom the youtube salad we did it all right check out the podcast there you go he's got a podcast as well on his channel bada bing bada boom uh, back. Like and subscribe to all things real time on YouTube. <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right. See you guys.